Hey guys, it's Diana here, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Draw. So, since it's October, and of course, October's spooky month, I'm going to try to do a Halloween illustration for this video. And I'm also really excited to draw Spider Gwen, which, for those of you who don't know, Spider Gwen is Gwen Stacy in a universe of Spider Man in which she was bitten by a radioactive spider instead of Peter Parker. And anyway, like a while back, she got a whole outfit redesign, which looks completely amazing. And I've always wanted to draw it, and for some reason I just kept forgetting, so, you know, today's gonna be the day. This video. Finally gonna get to draw her, and I'm gonna do a step-by-step -step so you guys see how I came up with this drawing or illustration. Now I'm going to start how I always do, by roughing in the character in very broad shapes. So this is all circles, squares, and general outline, trying to figure out what pose I want her to be in, that sort of thing. And again, I might play around with changing a few shapes here and there. Oh, do I want her foot to come out further? Or is her body really angled? Like, I still don't really know what pose I'm giving her right now. So a lot of it is just exploring and kind of seeing what I feel like doing today. Now of course Halloween is around the corner and this is a Halloween illustration. So I'm incorporating a little trick or treating in there because I think it'd be really cool to be a superhero and go trick or treating. I guess it'd be kind of cheating since you could cover a lot more ground, but hey, you know. Superheroes and sidekicks and everybody need to trick or treat too. Everybody loves candy. There's nothing wrong with that. All right, so I kind of finished the sketch and roughed her in, but uh, I wasn't really sure about the sketch. So later I went and I did a sketch in my sketchbook while I was out and around town, and I actually prefer that sketch a lot more. Though there are some parts of this sketch that I also like, so I'm going to bring in the sketch from my sketchbook and kind of create a compromise between this digital sketch and my sketchbook sketch. So here you see that I've drawn in the sketchbook sketch and I'm just trying to figure out mm, which proportions do I want to keep, what parts of this rough sketch do I want to keep versus the digital one. And So I'm going to put the opacity lower and then redraw everything and find an in-between in the two sketches that I'll be happy with. Again, this isn't the line art, it isn't fine-tuning, this is just putting in another rough sketch slightly cleaner than before and figuring out how to merge these two sketches that are very similar but, you know, have big differences. Alright, so I decided that what I was kind of happy with was I like the upper torso expression and arm posing in my sketchbook sketch, which you see that I've kept here. And I also like the digital sketch and how I had the legs and that kind of posing. So I think it's going to be a half and half of the two sketches for now. And now I'm going in and kind of cleaning everything up firming up the lines, deciding where I want thicker lines to be for later when I do the inking, that sort of thing. Basically finishing up the drawing and getting it ready for the next stage. Alright, so here I'm finally ready to continue on and go into inking. I've kind of found the sketch and firmed up the lines that I wanted and kind of giving myself a good guideline of, okay, this is what I'm drawing and this is how it's going to look. So now that I'm going to pick my brush, I'm going to just pick a pretty general Photoshop brush and then adjust it to my needs. Alright, so I think I'm pretty happy with this brush. Shape Dynamics is on, pen pressure is on, but the minimum diameter is raised a little bit so the line doesn't go as thin. And I also have transfer on, so there's a bit of a gradient. When you're working on inking something, I think it's really important to kind of pick maybe two brush sizes that you want to use and stick to it. It's pretty much the same as if you're inking something traditionally. You don't want to use 15 pens and then forget 
which pens you were using, so then you use a pen that you weren't using before and your lines don't look the same. So I technically usually try to stick to maybe two or three brush sizes when I'm inking. So an easy way to remember this is kind of try out different brush sizes and then once you decide, okay, I'm definitely going to be using a seven for a lot of the line work, you do a dot to the side and you put the size of the brush. That way, later when you're trying to redo a line, you don't use a brush size 10 and then you have to be constantly thinning it out or adjusting it because all of your other lines are a brush 7 size. So yeah, I'm just going to go through here and start inking all of the lines. Again, I'm one of those people that the sketch to me is more of a guide. I don't follow it so strictly. It's more of a, an idea of, hey, I kind of want it to look like this. But then when I'm inking, I tend to, you know, make executive decisions about, mm, do I really want that there? Do I really want this to thin that much, etc. So different people work different ways. Some people stick very, very closely to their sketch and just ink their sketch, while I use my sketch as more of a guide. Both options can work. I think it's pretty much just completely up to the person. I'm pretty good at improvising and if I'm not following my sketch super closely, I can make pretty good decisions about what a good line art would be instead of what I had in the sketch. While other people spend, you know, hours and hours on their sketch because they want it to be perfect and then they just ink this perfect sketch and that works for them. There's many different types of inking styles and drawing styles, so a lot of it is exploring and trying to figure out what works for you. So now I'm starting to decide, okay, I definitely want some heavier, thicker lines. I'm going to need another brush size to kind of guide myself with. So I'm putting a point down for a brush size 9. Now I might go 9 or 10, but 9 is a good reference that, okay, I was using 7 and that's too skinny, but 9, 10, and 11 will be my thicker brush sizes. Alright, so here again I'm just continuing with the line art. As you guys can see, I'm sticking mostly to the brush sizes that I decided on and deciding where I want to put my thicker lines. Usually I tend to put thicker lines wherever there's a contact point. So I'm just going to move through this kind of quickly. Again, don't want to do a 20 minute video of just me doing liner. But here you can see where I'm not sticking to certain parts of my sketch. For example, I know that I changed her leg from the sketch because I decided Eh, I'm not sure about that shape. I feel like this new shape that I just drew out would be a much more dynamic angle and just overall silhouette for this character. If there's one thing to know that pretty much everyone knows about the Spider-Man characters in Spider-Man universe is that they have some crazy gymnastic poses and everything's really dynamic and aerodynamic, which, you know, kind of makes sense if they're moving through buildings and flying around with spider web. So I want to make sure that her pose stays fairly dynamic as well. Now the liner that I'm working on here is much more about cleanup. You can see me picking much thinner and much thicker lines. So now I've also added brush size 5 and brush size 15. And these are the lines that are going to really make a statement. So they will either be the very thin detail lines or the very thick, bold shadow lines. Again, I completely love this new design for Spider-Gwen and just the color choices, which I mean, I'm not doing color in this video, that will be the next video. But the color choices for her outfit are just so simplistic but also very pretty. And her outfit is still very feminine without you know, being gross or having to show too much skin, so it's just like a really awesome character design. I'm not sure if there's any specific rule on how to draw webbing, especially not in a comic book superhero world. I tried to look up some reference for the webbing in Spider-Man, but it seemed like it wasn't exactly consistent, it was kind of all over the place and draw it as you will, so... That's pretty much how I'm drawing the spider webbing. Making it look cool, but I, I doubt that that's what it would actually look like if, you know, it was a real life movie. And of course, this is a Halloween illustration. So we gotta make sure that we have some candy, because I mean, trick or treating, 
Halloween, they kind of come hand in hand. So I'm making her pumpkin that she carries around her candy in. Or I guess swings around with her candy in. Whichever. And because I want her swinging around maybe through some buildings, I haven't decided really on a background yet. I'm also adding some of the candy moving through space, so some of it is falling in or out of the jack-o'-lantern or her little candy bag. And this adds on to the feeling that she's moving and she's in motion if the things that she's holding are off-kilter or also seem to be falling in and out or moving. So I'm just going to drop some quick color in here to make her pop from the background. And that's it. This is my Spider Gwen video. The next video will feature color and maybe a background. I don't know if I want to do a background, but stick around, like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more, and check next week for another video with color. Thanks guys. Bye.